I'm Chip Fisher, President of Fisher Wallace Labs. Thank you for coming this morning. We have a wonderful presentation uh, by Dr. Gad Alon of the University of Maryland. Dr. Alon graduated from the Physical Therapy School at the Wingate Institute in Israel. He earned a master's degree from the Medical College of Virginia and a PhD from the University of Maryland. His major teachings include therapeutic technologies, management of limb amputation, and pathological movements. Dr. Alon has been named Teacher of the Year five times, and his research and teaching has earned him worldwide recognition in the field of clinical electrotherapy. Dr. Alon has published 34 research articles, over 175 abstracts, proceedings in professional journals, and serves as a reviewer to eight scientific journals. Please help me in welcoming Dr. Alon. Uh, together, we asked the question, uh, what happened in the brain when you actually apply that kind of electrical stimulation and you're looking at the magnetic resonance imaging right on the MRI while the stimulation is going on? What we call a proof of concept that we could actually do MRI and stimulate inside the MRI and show what happened to the brain. Uh, so what I'd like to do is to present to you, first of all, a little bit of that work uh, to give us some kind of an indication where, where we're going right now. And then when I finish with that, I'll show you just a little bit what we're doing right now in a pilot study that actually has been sponsored by uh, Fisher Wallace uh, in, in part, uh, where we actually apply that kind of a stimulation on people with Parkinson's disease. Whether the, the TDC or the TPC, nam namely the direct current or the pulse current, whether they have measurable effect on priming the CNS loci remain mostly hypothetical. And so what is the thing? We see the clinical results, the behavioral changes, but we don't really know that when we apply that stimulation on the brain, what does it do inside the brain? And so this presentation is really the first attempt to say, well, we could look at the MRI while we're stimulating. Let's see if there is even effect on the brain. You could see here that uh, we had two sessions. So in one session, we gave what we call the TDC or the, the direct can. And I'll show you that more in a minute. But you have to put the electrode in the right place. And so obviously, we have the setting here. And you could see here that the electrode that we are using are relatively uh, of a larger uh, size because in our particular case we're trying to cover the motor area of the brain. Uh, so one week they will come and we will use the, the, the direct current stimulator and the next week they will come and we'll basically use the uh, a pulse current and in this particular case the pulse current is the Fisher um, Wallace uh, uh, device. And then we have a, a specific protocol of the MRI scanning altogether. Uh, uh, what we will do is what we call uh, the resting state, which means you lie down, you don't do anything. Then we actually activate the hands in order to identify where is exactly the motor area that we're trying to do. And then we uh, do again resting, which means you don't do anything, but we apply the stimulation. Right? Then again, we uh, stop the stimulation to get the rest of the state without the stimulation, and then the second time that we'll do stimulation, there are two bouts of stimulation. Uh, each one lasts about uh, six minutes. So altogether, about 13 minutes of stimulation. Now, one of the other things that we do before they get into the MRI, we give them a, what we call a behavioral test, which is a visual uh, a motor reaction time test. Basically, something that they see, they have a mouse, right, a, a regular mouse, but there is a light there, and when they see the light pop up, they need to stop it. And we take the time that it takes from the moment they see that, and it's usually in the millisecond range. So that will give us, if there was any change in behavior, right, we test them after we finish that, and if they get faster or slower, you know, we'll be able to find out if something happened in terms of their motor response. All right. So now uh, I'm going to show you very briefly the results. And uh, uh, I, I can't really discuss too much the results in the sense that uh, uh, if I discuss it too much, I will not be able to publish it. Right? We, we, we're not allowed today to, uh, to do those kind of things. So it's a very uh, uh, informal uh, discussion. So uh, uh, this is an example of the MRI. 
uh, at the resting state without stimulation and at the resting state with stimulation. Okay? This is an example, and this one you, you could actually show. This is an example, again, comparing stimulation with the direct current with the one with the pulse current. We're actually looking for changes in blood flow. So it's the hemodynamic response. We're not actually seeing the neural connection, right? We see the hemodynamic response in that area, and there are studies to say that that hemodynamic response is associated with increased neural activity. But we actually look at the blood flow. We're not looking at the neural connection themselves. And in fact, one of the things that was the first time to, to verify that most of the effect, not in this particular uh, case that I'm showing here, but as a group, when we looked at it, most of the effect occur immediately under the electrode. And that's, that's a very fascinating type of thing because if you really think about it, the, the skull is a very good isolator, right, for current to flow. So if, if the skull is so good isolator, how most of the effect of that stimulation in the brain is right under the electrode. 